New England Living TV is brought to you by Clark, Sub-Zero, Wolf & Co. Kohler Signature Store by Supply New England and Marvin Windows and Doors. And of course, please stop into the all-new Seven Tide in the Seaport District in Boston. Today I'm on my way to the coastal village of Rowayton, Connecticut, in the city of Norwalk, about 40 miles from New York City. Rowayton is set on a 1.4 square mile peninsula and is extremely scenic. I'm on my way to meet homeowners Carol and Bruce Beinfield. Carol is an artist and Bruce is an architect. Bruce's firm, Beinfield Architecture, has won dozens and dozens of design awards and Bruce was named to the New England Design Hall of Fame. The 3,500 square foot home, which is located on Farm Creek, a tidal estuary, is definitely one of a kind, deriving its design from the amusement park and trolleyway that was located there up until the 1938 hurricane in World War II. Back in the day, thousands of visitors steamed in by boat then rode trolleys to the park. This history plays an important role in Bruce's design of the home. It is the first home he has ever designed for himself, and he considers it one of his favorite projects. We're going to meet the homeowners, take a tour of this unique home, and then Bruce and Carol are turning their state-of-the-art kitchen over to a chef and me, and we're going to put on a dinner party and celebrate New England living in Rowayton, Connecticut. That is beyond words. Hello. Hello. Hi. You must be Bruce. <laughs> yes, Parker. Nice to see Hi, you. I'm Carol. Hi, Carol. Nice, nice to, to see you. you. Oh my goodness. The Thank spot you. is incredible. This was an old trolleyway originally built in 1892 to get trolley service from the South Norwalk train station to an amusement park out on Long Island Sound a couple hundred yards from here. And uh, with the design of this house, we tried to pick up on some of the uh, history of the site. What do their neighbors think? Because I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's a little different. Most of them are very appreciative of it. Because there hadn't been a structure here before, and it had been fairly natural, there were a lot of people that were concerned about their views being impacted. Right, so you were respectful about so that. The, so the front of the house facing the street's only 12 and a half feet wide. Yeah, I know, <laughs> it's, it's very narrow, it's so 12 and a half feet. That way it gives them the opportunity to still uh, look out over the tidal estuary. This first area that you're in is the entryway and the stairway. Because it's such a skinny house, yes. We wanted to surprise them with the amount of drama it has and encourage people to really walk around and, and explore. Okay, because that's exactly what I was feeling when I first walked in, because this isn't your traditional foyer. This, it, it's welcoming, and it's, it, it makes me, I mean, just thirst for looking at every detail. So this is the kitchen. In the kitchen, we used unfinished copper as the countertops and natural brass Beautiful. as the, mm. the faucets. So this changes then. This isn't yeah, going to stay exactly always, the same patina. It's always changing. Every, every time you uh, put a glass down on it, it leaves a little impress. Very cool. One of the interesting things that I've discovered in architecture is if you use materials that people think of as very cold and industrial, Oftentimes, you can create very warm and sensual environments. Wow. And now tell me about this island here. The base of the island is a French antique, and the top is a granite, so very durable. And so that, that juxtaposition between that vintage, old world, and then new, yeah, and, and, and the textures we, yeah, of wood and metal. Yeah, we try to get a, a balance. The underlying architectural order is very strong here, knowing that the house was really designed for an artist who would bring her own level of chaos in. And it's the tension between the order and the chaos that's um, one of the areas that really makes the house dynamic. This feels very comfortable. This was all about comfort, actually. And this is a uh, restoration hardware couch called The Cloud. I was, I was going to say... You'll see why I, oh, I call oh, yeah. it that. Oh, yeah. Most people, once they get on the cloud, have a hard time <laughs> getting, getting back up again. So here are the ideas for the entire um, house to really open up to the view beyond. Like the for, stern of a, of a boat. What we did in terms of landscaping was install what's called a living shoreline. We added soil, then we plant native grasses. By doing a living shoreline, the shoreline has the ability to be resilient to major storms. Plus it looks nice. Yeah. 
Now the whole trestle thing, is that a little touch of whimsy? Or is it's whimsy, remembering the uh, architecture of the amusement park and the trolley way. It's also a source of wonder. So but in some way you're, you're, you're hoping that they wonder. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Oh, and so you have a library ladder. We've always thought that, you know, books are a wonderful way of giving warmth to mm -hmm. a, a space. And if you, if you push that button there, yes. that's wow. the, the barn door in the front. This has a nice view. This is uh, one of our guest bedrooms. This room, we really wanted to take advantage of the view and mm -hmm. keep it fairly simple. And so you're a big fan of rock and roll then, is that what? Well, yeah, this is a rock and roll installation that uh, we put together. This oh, is Jim, Jim Morrison. Morrison. This is Jimi Hendrix. Hendrix. And this is me actually in 1955. Oh, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're stepping through the door with the doors. This is the master and we really wanted to open up to the view here. And you did. But wow, so more outdoors inside. This is great. I want to do a speech from up here. Don't you feel like you just want to say <laughs> something important? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I love the organic pieces that you have uh, interspersed. There are collections everywhere. It, it looks like you've lived here, honestly, 100 years. It's amazing. Hi. Hello. <laughs> this is a nice perch. This is my messy space. Yes. Quite lovely, actually. <laughs> yes, exactly, right? Just filled. Because mm -hmm. I think that's the way you like things. I used to do illustration years ago, and now um, I work more with Bruce doing interior design, so now all my artwork is just for myself and for fun. And, and I uh, like objects. I like pretty objects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, as you can see, it's just sort of a hodgepodge of all my stuff. And like my... if someone was to design an art studio to look like it's very well used <laughs> and, and you know filled with inspiration, they would design it just like this. Well, thank you, thank you, yes. Yeah, uh, this is an old uh, post office, uh, there's a little seat that comes out. Oh, isn't that cool? And these little slots. I'm like water, I just fill everything. <laughs> <laughs> and the whimsy touches, the whimsical touches. I like things that are a little odd. A yep, little... and that'll make you go, hmm. <laughs> Hmm, what's that for, right? It's a curio It's like a big curiosity mm -hmm. shop. <laughs> but perfect for an artist studio. You don't want anything too fussy. That's what I love about your home. Absolutely. I grew up in uh, old houses, so you can see, I, I, even though this is a very modern house, I, I still have to bring my old Yeah, the vintage pieces. It, so what are you going to do when all the spaces are completely filled? Yeah, we'll have to <laughs> get another house. <laughs> New England Living TV is brought to you by Clark, Sub-Zero, Wolf & Co., Kohler Signature Store by Supply New England, and Marvin Windows and Doors. And of course, please stop into the all-new Seven Died in the Seaport District in Boston.